Welcome all of you to this live program, Dothmic Principles. Today, our guest of honor is Professor Paul Lee from London, United Kingdom. Professor Lee is a leading consultant orthopedic surgeon with dual visiting professorships in sports medicine and medical engineering. He's the founder of MSK Doctors, London Cartilage Clinic in Holly Street, which specializes in regeneration and recovery. Using a combination of scientific and engineering approach, Professor Lee has designed the biological recovery program, which successfully speeds up recovery for his patients. So today is my great honor to introduce you to Professor Paul Lee from the United Kingdom. Over to you, Paul. Okay, thank you. Right, so hi everybody, I'm Professor Paul Lee, and today I'm going to talk to you about cartilage regeneration and what are the new things and what are the principles that we should follow in terms of cartilage regeneration. Uh, there you go. So as we say, I'm a, I'm a knee surgeon and um, lower limb surgeon. I do hips and knees, but most of my practice is in the knees. And I am also a regeneration scientist working with the University of Lincoln to look at a lot of cell research and actually look at different um, cartilage differentiation and also look at a lot of basic science. As a, another part of my um, research program, we are working with engineer as a medical engineering. We actually try to develop uh, different principles and actually find out what the course is in, in how to improve cartilage and how to improve our understanding of how we can do cartilage regeneration. So I will go through some of the uh, typical questions and typical, some of the, share some of the studies with you and talk about some of the cartilage regeneration techniques as well. So first of all, let's jump straight into it. Cartilage regeneration. Now, it's not just about cartilage. I think regeneration is, is as a whole should be a topic. It is a pretty hot topic. And I think that's what the future is in terms of orthopedics and MSK, musculoskeletal medicine. Regeneration is about restoring the equilibrium of the joint or of, of whatever organ that we're treating. We should treat the joint as an organ. Of course, we know that the, the knee joint uh, is attached to the hips, it's attached to the knee, all those sort of biomechanics we need to take into account. But at the same time, so we need to understand the homeostasis uh, and also the basic science within the joint in order to apply our thinking to regeneration appropriately and properly. There are many surgical techniques and there are many myths or there are many belief and tradition has been passed on, it may or may not be something that um, something that is useful and something that actually we haven't been thinking about. And one of the main aspects that we're focusing on in regeneration is about equilibrium, metabolism, and homeostasis. These are the things that we must take care of in order for regeneration to be successful. And of, often we are racing between a regeneration and degeneration sort of balance and we want to make sure that we tip the balance correctly to help us. As a surgeon, we have got many, many different tools that we can, we can actually help our patients. There are, we, uh, in terms of our tools, we have surgery, of course, uh, uh, we're blessed to be able to do surgery to patients and be able to help patients. Surgery is extremely powerful. We can actually deliver very high dose of whatever it is, into an exact location and to allow the body to function and regenerate. Of course, we can also inject, and the injection part in this diagram is extremely important because we can alter the cytokines and the environment within the injection. And we must not forget about biomechanics or actually just mechanics and physics. And so remember that apple falling down from the tree, which is... So most of the biomechanics really is just physics by Isaac Newton that was defined many, many centuries ago. So if we are thinking about regeneration, this is the principle that we should follow. Within these photos, there are lots of material we can use to try to help our patient. But we must think about the equilibrium and we must address every single part of our environment in order for regeneration to be successful. So there are many, many things that we can use within the uh, regeneration surgery or, re or injections. Currently, these are just a few things that I listed out that is currently available in the UK in 2023 that we can inject into people. 
Um, so if people typically saying that, yeah, we can inject you with uh, steroid or HA, but actually there are many, many more things. But actually, are they all useful or are they just rubbish? Can they actually help somebody or, or actually they are just a big marketing claim? I think the key is to understand what each of them are, why you're using them, and does it actually make any scientific sense? Later on during this lecture, we were going to talk about scientific understanding and how each of these products potentially can um, help our body and what my perspective and what my experience with these products. Of course, not all of them are useful, but some of them are useful in some situations. So these are just, just the injectables. Then we talk about surgery. What surgery can we actually do to regenerate cartilage? Of course, you must heard of micro fractures and probably been doing them as well. They, and then different companies come up with slightly smaller peg, we call them nano fracture, micro fracture, micro micro fracture, many, many names, right? And then one of the main things I asked to talk about today is ACI. So ACI stands for, of course, you know, is autologous chondrocyte implantation. And then there are huge amount of variation go on to it and people put different letters in front different letters in at the back and they change it to many different things there's ac macy and then after that there will be stacy we're going to talk about and then then you may heard of something called amic um and then there is um which is which is matrix the m is stand for but then there is some company come up with asic which is stand for collagen um of course, after we use our cells, then the next scale up is our um, allograft as such. So there's prochondrix, and then there is um, osteochondral plugs as well as old. So there are many, many options available to treat um, to treat uh, cartilage, and depends on what surgery that we want to do. There are different ways that we can help our patients. Then after that, remember on my diagram, we talk about cells. So we got our way to do surgery. We got something to change our cytokines. The next thing is cells. Where can we get our cells from? Typically, these are the things that we can get our cells from currently is on the market. And again, a lot of little acronym, a lot of words that is made up and a lot of different different letters that have been putting up together. Um, you know, not all of them are correct. Not all of them make sense. But nevertheless, these are something that people you know, come and use. So typically, they, these are just cells. And PRP, you know, are they cells? Are they not cells? I think, you know, in my opinion, they're not cells, but we'll go through that later. Uh, so let's go straight into the uh, different type of cells because we're talking about contact regeneration without the cells. Things tend not to be able to regenerate. So we need to have a pretty sound understanding of what cells does and, and what is what, what are we talking about. A lot of clinics and a lot of surgeons say that, oh, yeah, I've been doing stem cells. Uh, when I see a bit of fat in my in my, um, in my repair or when I see a little bit of micro fracture or whatever, yeah, it's all about stem cells. But what is stem cells? You know, so stem cell, what we're talking about is MSC, which is mesenchymal stem cells. That's what that's what we are trying to use. That's what we're trying to claim and trying to use those cells to regenerate and regrow things. Because in a lab, we can change these type of MSC into whatever we like it to turn. We can turn it into muscle, cartilage bone, tendon, fat, whatever we like, you know, it is, depends on what chemical we put in our petri dish. In, so therefore different things will differentiate. And that is very, very obvious. And in a lab, that's certainly something that can be done. However, you notice this big things I highlight as medicinal signaling cells. It is very important because this concept of MSC uh, of stem cells has changed. Uh, I'll go through that later. So in terms of cells, where we can get cells from, we can get it from our skin, we can get it from our blood, we can also get it from our bone, which is some people call it BMAC, and we can get it from placenta, we can get it from the uh, uh, umbilical cord, and also, of course, we can get it from fat. And we can also get it from cartilage itself and get it from a donor. First of all, we're going to go to talk about PRP, so I'm sure you know what PRP is. As you can see, PRP, there's no cells in it. Platelet is not really a cell, platelet is platelet. And really PRP is just a concentrated uh, growth factor. It's very, very useful. Uh, there are many different companies to talk about different PRP and different growth factors. 
Um, you can spin it once, you can spin it twice, you can use a big spinner, you can use a small spinner, and there are different concentrations that you can use. However, there has been many studies to show that higher concentration is better, lower concentration is better. So actually, nobody really knows. Depends what study you read, and depends what um, company supporting that study. There, and also, you might hear people say there are a leukocyte rich or leukocyte poor PRP. Does it really matter? Honestly, probably not. Um, of course, each company will claim on their marketing material that they are better. And there are some companies that would like to say that because we spin the, spin the uh, PRP twice, we are better off X, Y, and Z. But ultimately, PRP is just a constant. The way that I see it is where on my regeneration diagram coming in is about delivering of cytokine. It is not something that will regenerate your cartilage, but it's, it's a very, very good adjunct to help my cartilage graph to stay healthy. And in the very beginning, it's very useful. Um, so it's, there are many factors affecting PRP, which we can delve deep into it. We have done some study to look at, actually, there are different, using the same system, if I take PRP from my left arm and then the right arm, the concentration and the um, amount of PRP production is different uh, with the same system, same type of uh, same type of device. Uh, so again, you know, this is something that is useful, but I wouldn't, you know, hinge on too much about about using that as a regeneration sort of surgery or or, or uh, injection. There is also uh, very important to say that uh, there has been three, four study now coming from the UK as a randomized control trial. Say so PRP have absolutely no no use at all in the treatment of osteoarthritis, but it still is very useful adjunct in regeneration medicine when we're trying to regenerate cartilage at the very beginning. And then we will talk about different cell therapy. We talk about you know, we're going to go down to talk about BMAC. BMAC is the next thing that we can get cells from. And one thing I want to raise is that taking BMAC is basically taking bone marrow aspirin. That's what it is. Um, but people call that, yeah, we can have MSC in there. We can have stem cells in there. Because in bone marrow, there's lots of stem cells. But the really sad truth is that in a bone marrow, there is more and other stuff in there as well, as we all, all know as an orthopedic surgeon. We know there is osteocast, there's osteoblast, there's osteocyte. Then we got NMC, which is the um, cells that is kind of like a phagocyte, it's kind of like a macrophage type cells. Then we got the MSC. So out of all of them, it is bone, right? So what, which type of cell do you think when we actually aspirate BMAC we have the most? Of course, it's the bone cells, it's the osteocyte, osteoclast and osteoblast. Of course, there will be you know, some, some MSC. We've done some study looking at 50 mils of bone marrow aspirate from the pelvis, and we actually get about 12, MSC. So if we think that we're sucking some bone out and spin it down and then inject it back in, we are delivering MSC into a specific area. I would urge you to rethink again. Now, this is something that, you know, there, there will be a lot. There are many studies to say that, yeah, BMAX is very useful and they can actually regenerate cartilage and all those sort of things. But I urge you to just think what is actually happening and what and does it actually make any logical sense? Um, it is something that worth worth considering. Okay, and then we we'll talked about fat earlier on. So these are the next thing I'm gonna go through fat. So why we wanna take fat? Because people people have many, many plenty to spare. In fat, we I have some experience of using fat, whether that is an injectable or using it as a cell base and in, term, in my scaffold to actually grow uh, cartilage afterwards. Um, the initial principle is that taking fat, we can de-differentiate the fat back into um, stem cells and then from and then that will go and um, the stem cell will then push down into the cartilage regeneration root and form cartilage. So there has been a long misnomer and say that we can actually push this cell back and then, and then push it that push it down to the other way. That does not happen. That cannot happen. That is just that is just science friction. That is not possible for fat to turn into cartilage. So it is something that if fat turn into cartilage by just putting it in the joint or our joint or our fat in the cartilage, you know, you know the, like the fat part in the cartilage will turn into cartilage. So it doesn't make sense. And I think about 10 years ago, 
that's a big hype about that. And um, I'm glad that we have done a lot of study to actually disprove that and actually dispel that myth. And also, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about Arnold Kaplan actually stand out and talk about actually this doesn't happen. A lot of times about marketing and about what people push and what what does what people say. But however, despite that, the negative um, media or me negative uh, sort of thinking behind this uh, fat fat cells and microfragmented fat, it is an extremely powerful tool. The fat do not turn into cartilage. However, if you break the fat into a break down the fat in a certain way to form microfragmented fat. What that will happen is that it disturbs the micro vessels near the fat. Within that, there are repairing cells they call parasites around those niches. And from those niches, they, these cells can actually release out and help to acting as a managerial director cell to push the equilibrium to the regeneration side. So, these, this sort of property of the microfragmented fat cells had been more understanding in the recent literature as well as our recent experiment. So it is extremely useful in a cytokine delivery and a director uh, and a direction forming sort of um, sort of adjunct in terms of cartilage regeneration in, in on top of helping us to do surgery. I remember there has been some studies that when we went to ICRS that people have been presented that they put in some fat underneath uh, some sort of membrane and then stitch it back on and expect that to form to form um, to form cartilage. It, they, they of course they show some result on that, but my own personal feeling is that if you interpose a fat onto a bone and then you put a graph on it, it's fat interposition actually. If you think about fracture, you want to be the fracture to heal. You want to pick the fat and the bits out from the middle, not with fat in between it. So it just somehow it really doesn't make sense. But of course, now we understand the fat a little bit more and uh, we have more in-depth understanding of what microfragmented fat will do. And I think that it is a really useful adjunct to something that I want to bring in because this is something that we can we, we, will, we will use uh, during our, our talk as well. And lipogems is what we've been doing before. Um, we have done quite a few of them. Um, we have got relatively good results. And uh, it is a good injectable. And uh, for, and also we use it after uh, cartilage regeneration to maintain those cells as well, alongside with our PRP. So we talk about all the commercially available product out there. And we still haven't really talked about, you know, cartilage cells. So, you know, you talk about, you know, these cells are all not really that good. So where are you going to get these cartilage cells from if you really want to regenerate cartilage? So yeah, we talked about the word stem cells and we can talk about cartilage cells. Really, these are the two real thing in life that can actually help you to get cartilage. So first of all, we want to just go back one step further when we talk about cells. So there are two types of stem cells as such that is labeled in the books. There are hemoprotic stem cells, which is extremely useful, extremely powerful. You can actually get them. And the hematologist has done it very successfully and have cured uh, leukemia and have, have sort of a lot of bone cancer, uh, not bone, sorry, blood cancer, because they can actually process those cells very easily. They can actually get the hemoprotic stem cells. But you must remember, hemoprotic stem cell is from blood and they will only form blood type cells. It does not change. So the only the cells that we are interested in in orthopedics is pretty much this one. And the mesenchymal stem cells as defined by the box before, because this is the one that, like I showed you earlier on, will turn into cartilage. And this is a picture of the bone marrow. And this is one of the photos that we show that, yeah, this is where the stem cells is. So we, we, we can get it from there. So this is the uh, some of the diagram that we showed earlier on. What we're really interesting in is just this part to get the stem cell, the, the mesenchymal stem cell, push it right down, all the way down to get some of these um, cartilage cells at the end. So this is the process that it will it will happen. But once it's mature, once the cells are mature, it it will stay on that side. So the function of a cartilage cell, we'll talk about that later. This is what the, on the books. That's what the cartilage cells look. The, the cartilage surface look like on a macrostructure. Um, you can see that the articular surface is there and you can see the archaea of Benihoff on there too. The, the top surface is parallel, the middle is cross, and then there is a very important tie mark on there as well. Now, so these are just an overall brief uh, explanation and just revise of the uh, cartilage. 
The next thing I want to talk about is the MSC, so mesenchymal stem cells. What is MSC? This is a paper that published by um, Arnold Kaplan and hypothesized in 1988, published in 1994, so so many years ago. Um, it has been well over, well over, you know, it's old tech as such, you know, long, long time ago. That's what we, we label that as MSC, and it really is outdated. The real name by Arnold Kaplan is actually called, this is his paper, is basically, we're going to change the name. The name needs to change to be uh, medicinal signaling cells because MSC uh, is very, very misleading. Uh, in the So his paper have actually said that it's a really good paper to read. If you have not seen that paper before, I would highly recommend you read that if you wanted, if you are into regeneration medicine or into orthopedic MSK regeneration, it is something that is very important to read. So, so in reality, when in a clinic, when we call that we're doing stem cell sort of treatment, it's actually very wrong. Um, there's, this is your scientific proof in a very big journal to tell you that, you know, from, from the guy that actually initially describes stem cells and say that we must not use that name anymore. So it is medicinal signaling cells, and that's something that we need to think about. So now we, we were saying that there are only two cells in this world will actually form, um, will actually form cartilage. One of them is actually uh, MSC, uh, but then now we say that actually MSC doesn't really form cartilage, they are just signaling cells. So therefore only one thing in this world that we know of can actually form cartilage, and they are chondrocyte, because chondrocyte, have a spe they have specialist cells, they have specialist functions. What do they do? They make cartilage. That's why we call them chondrocyte. So in all reality, if we want to make cartilage or cartilage-like cell, the only possibility that we have to do that is with cartilage cells, chondrocyte. This is something that I learned from Professor James Richardson back in Oster Street. And uh, we have got a lot, there's many data to talk about. Uh, ACI, Australogus chondrocyte implantation has worked very well. And there's a very, very good long-term outcome uh, from very high caliber journal. And these are published, you know, not that long ago, but you know, there are good data to suggest that ACI do work in, um, in lesions on, on large lesion and also chondral defect as well. And I personally, with, you know, work with 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 James, and we have reviewed his data and we have looked at it. And actually, it is something that worked works really well. ACI do happen. ACI can work, um, but there are also pros and cons to it as well. In terms of the UK, in Nice, it has been um, uh, rec in, in one of the recommendations say that yeah, ACI can be done for defect over two centimeters. There are other small criteria uh, that what, when you can do, when can, you cannot do it, but actually in the overall, in the technical guidance is that, yep, it, it can be done, it is effective and it can be used. So that is actually quite a big thing. And I think uh, James played a big, very big part into that. So what is ACI for? Just a very, very brief run through is we're taking some cartilage cells, we get those cartilage cells, we are uh, enzyme digest them, get because we need to break out the matrix and then we get those cells, we culture those cells in a uh, in a petty dish. And then after that, we put it back onto the uh, the joint, the lesions. And then we, in the, in the state and, and the old fashioned way, we stick a perioosteal flap onto it to actually um, patch it up and to keep the site, to the cells in place. So this is one of those schematic that we can show you cells at the bottom. And then we can actually put the, put the, um, put the, uh, the, also, also um, the membrane on top, which is just a simple, simple membrane, uh, which is the um, the patch, and then we actually then move on into a uh, MACI, which is Macy. Then actually we have a more synthetic membrane. Things are actually growing more in within the membrane before we actually culture within that before we put it onto the the lesion. And finally, state third generation is that we actually mix that membrane alongside with some of the growth factors or cytokines or or a bit of so we've been more smart now instead of just using cells we, we use cells we use a scalpel and actually we use a bit of uh, growth factors as well to actually encourage these cells to grow and stay so that's and then and then now we've got another generation which is the sphere rocks which is the uh, codon again instead of having it in a two-dimensional way we just have a three-dimensional way in a ball um, so there are these are the general movement of ACI. However, um, ACI is very useful. It's very useful for large defect. However, it's still very costly. It is a two-stage procedure. Um, it still can use. It, it's very successful treating large defect, and they've got a lot of very good 
long-term data to treating those lesions as well. And of course, ACI or cartilage regeneration is only suitable for patching up uh, defects when the whole knee is degenerated or the whole joint is degenerated, it is not suitable. So it is something that we need to uh, understand and uh, its limitation. Um, so in terms of ACI, then we will ask why, you know, why, why we want to do things at two stage uh, instead of single stage. Um, you can see that um, when we're doing cell culture, there's something that we need to think about. There are uh, lots of lots of variation when we're trying to get the cell from the cartilage. We digest them and then we put it on a petty dish. We then put loads of different chemical within this that petty dish. And these are many, many variation factors that we can actually affect the ability to the, the amount of cells, um, how good the cells is. And there are many, many variables within ACI. So if we look back to the basic to think about what cartilage does, um, a cartilage is a specialized cells and how we can how we can actually make um, the cartilage to, uh, it does not need any blood supply or any uh, nerve supplies. The nutrient from the um, cartilage is actually come from diffusion by uh, the chondrules are actually getting these um, these uh, nutrient actually from the joint itself. So we don't really need blood. And a lot of the time people mixing uh, micro, micro fracture with, uh, with cartilage regeneration and actually cartilage, and that actually just doesn't really make too much of a sense. If we are doing micro fracture, uh, you can see this is a micro fracture that, you know, a long time ago, that's what we, we do. And we got a lesion, we break, the bone in there, we, we make a hole within the bone, we see the blood coming out, we think that, yeah, great, we've got lots of stem cells come out, but actually we talked about it earlier on, by having blood coming out from the joint, it is uh, from, from the from the knee, from the hole, it's not great because most of them that are coming out really are just bone cells, really. They are just, um, they are just um, osteocyte, uh, osteoclast instead of actual MSC or stem cells. So even if you're putting stem cells in, actually they are medicinal signaling cells anyway. Um, they are not really true stem cells as such that what we expect to it, it to happen. And that is defined very clearly uh, from Arnold Clapham's paper that he wrote 30 years later to say that he had made a mistake. It is not, they are not stem cells. So I do wonder, is it any any validity for people still doing micro fracture nowadays to try to try to uh, encode it releasing stem cell to actually healing the cartilage. This is not something that we should really, yeah, this is practically we should, something that we should really think twice before we, 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 we do that. But however, on the same time, bone, drilling into the bone is very useful. We call that nowadays bone marrow stimulation technique. We don't, basically, we don't drill 20 holes anymore. Maybe we drill one or two to stimulate the bone marrow to, re, to restructure the, um, the um, subchondral surface and to actually re, reorganize the bone surface underneath. Which is very important. It's very useful. Or venting that um, that area that was defected, but instead of believing or telling patients that yeah, because we drew many many holes, the stem cell coming out and we form a new cartilage. I think it, it is not quite correct if that's the way that we put it. But however, it remained that bone marrow stimulation technique. One or two holes would help. Uh, we still make a very will actually help stimulating regeneration in a certain way. Um. Micro fracture, nano fracture, or or micro FX. There are many marketing material to come out to talk about different way that you you get into the um, the cartilage, uh, sorry, the bone, and uh, different you can get the get the um, the bone marrow come out in a different way and all those sort of things. And this is some of the marketing things. But again, you know what we want to think about is within the bone mainly we got osteocyte, osteoblast, not MSC and. And it is very important that when we're looking at the microstructure of the cartilage, um, this is a very important thing to tie mark. Actually, by design in our human in our body, that we do not want cartilage on the top here to mix with the bone. So actually, making multiple holes to create channels between what we're trying to repair to bone probably is not a very good idea. If it is a good idea we would actually have massive amount of blood supply into there. We would actually have good structure, it would massive amount of blood circulation or mi micro uh, capillaries within that to deliver the oxygen or deliver the blood into it. If the if cartilage regeneration or cartilage depending on blood to survive or oxygen to survive. 
But this tie mark here have really showed that nature do not want oxygen or blood into that area. Um, and then we talk about chondrocyte. You can see within the chondrocyte there, there are a lot of, uh, you know, what a lot of things around them. Chondrocyte like to surround themselves with this white stuff. Uh, it is not blood that they like to surround themselves with. So these white stuff around there is the uh, ECM, which is the extracellular matrix. And this extracellular matrix is mainly made by proteoglycan uh, and glycoproteins glyco, um, and um, and collagens. So there are in there, there are no oxygen or, or blood in there. And so these are the building blocks that and the cartilage like to surround themselves with. The chondros like actually want to surround themselves with these sort of things, not um, not bone or blood. They actually build barriers to stop that happening. So sometimes we need to think about when we're doing surgery, what we are, is it what we're doing is correct or what we're doing is actually logical or sensible? Um, is it what nature is trying to, to, to design uh, for, for the cartilage to work? So now we have looked at the macrostructure and the microstructure. Uh, we can actually design our own system uh, to try to get things working. And in terms of my suggestion, that's how we, I, my suggestion for you, uh, how we can regenerate cartilage. We need to have some autologous cells. We need to get our own chondrocyte, which is very useful, and then um, our scaffold um, that we, because we know that on our extracellular matrix is actually collagen and hyaluronan. So if we can get a collagen scaffold or hyaluronan scaffold, glycoprotein scaffold, that would be really useful because that's what the building block is needed uh, within it. And of course, we talked about the growth factors, the cytokines and the stimulation around it. The, the synovial fluid, do not have any um, hemoglobin in it. it it's anophial fluid actually have cytokines in it. And the best way for us to get cytokines is actually via PRP um, and, and with a bit of HA as well. And certainly I do not recommend microfracture if we are doing ACI alone. Um, the next question then we talk about is, you know, we like to use cells. We want to use the cells. Now, do we really need to culture the cells? ACI traditionally is autologous chondrocyte implantation, but it didn't say anything about culture. The C does not stand for culture. Do we really need to culture? So then I think into literature and have a look, you know, does it really matter the amount of cells, the number of cells? Actually, it doesn't matter. We don't really know what the exact amount of cells that we need for the, for the defect of the area. And there are different grades and there are different papers suggest different concentration. And of course, because it's published, most of them worked. So we don't really know that what is the main concentration. So, so if that's the case, then why do we culture them? Remember, I showed you when we try to culture things, we culture things into culture medium. And this is what MDM, uh, DMEM is. There are loads of stuff within that culture. So we are putting uh, the chondrocyte, we digest them, take them out from their normal environment, which is surrounding by... HA um, uh, collagen, and we take them out and put them into this environment here with all this stuff around them. Um, so it is not uh, somewhere that they really like to flourish, but we think that it's good because it's how we culture things. So this is a culture uh, area and we put them into a oxygen rich environment and uh, put them into, into the incubator. And then we will monitor our oxygen or carbon dioxide, humidity or temperature and our uh, nitrogen level, and we want to keep it in uh, the body temperature and also with this sort of, you know, um, a percentage of oxygen and carbon dioxide monitored really closely. But actually, if you look at all these parameters, it's not quite correct. It is not what the cartilage want to be in. This is, and, and we are trying to grow the cells in that sort of environment. So it is a little analogy here. You know, when we're doing ACI, when we first take the cell cell and then we go for different passages, so which means different generation. And then so when you put the ACI in the initially, the cells look like that. After nine generations, it look a little bit different um, because the environmental factor will really have changed. So you would really see that the, uh, the cells that initially you harvest, you look down the microscope compared to the one you come with, they look very, very different. However, it still can perform its job, we believe. So, but, you know, you think that, well, okay, so 
we now know that all these problems are there. Um, so we got know the limitation, but technology have really moved on, right? So can we actually do better? Now we understand um, what what is actually needed, what is the, the, the problem, and can we actually try to do better? So we know that chondrocyte is is confined within the extracellular matrix and within the extracellular matrix you can see that these cells are in there so first of all we need to get them out we want to use autologous chondrocyte so we jailbreak them so we digest them and then after that once these chondrocyte come out of a very cocoon nice environment it will start to want to get itself comfortable again so therefore it will start to build so we will then use the body as a as a incubator because outside on the outside world we try to use an incubator to mimic what the body is like so why don't we just use our body and put it back there in straight away and use that to incubate if we provide these cells the correct raw materials such as collagen uh ha and uh gycopeptide and cytokines if you give them a correct raw material as well as what we call the, the medicinal signaling cells, the correct director, they will guide them and get the cells to try to regenerate and actually help things build quickly. And of course, we mustn't break the time up. And this is what we talk about as a single stage, uh, single treatment autologous chondrocyte implantation, Stacy. So it's one surgery instead of two surgery and you have to wait and schedule. But of course, we have to follow this principle, make sure so we will have the cells bit sorted, scaffold sorted, nutrition and growth factors sorted. Important thing is biomechanics, something that we must look at before we do any of this. If the mechanics is wrong, forget it. Whatever you put in, it will break. So this is where the HDO, DFO, and the braces become helpful. Just briefly mention this. This is one of the cases that we have done. Uh, so in order to do a STACY, um, we need to actually bring instead of sending the cells to the lab, we bring the technician and bring the lab to theater. And here's our lab. And we open the knee, we identify a defect, we, could, we take, the, take the cartilage from the non-very bearing surface area. We do the, what we do in the lab, we cut it into pieces, digest them, and then we will take a little bit of bone marrow to get our medicinal signaling cell as well. We process them in theater, and then we will we will we will digest them in a uh, incubator uh, because that take, you need to heat it up for it to work. And once we've done that, we will get the cells out. We check it immediately in uh, in theater. We count the amount of cells that we got, and then of course during that time, the surgeon will prepare the area to measure out the membrane, and then we will then use we will, when we get the get the mixture of the. Um, uh, chondrocyte as well as the medicinal signaling cell, we put it onto the membrane and we stitch it on. And then after that, we cover it with tissue and um, we will give the patient an unloader to try to offload the leg. And then um, we would we would then change a lesion from something like that. With time, it will go and disappear and cartilage have come back onto there. Um, so these are some of the cases that we have done and we will scope that in about six months, in about, in about 12 months time. There are good cartilage regeneration on there and we took a little biopsy and we show nice um, stuff on stain on some of these uh, biopsy, which is great. Of course, uh, when we use PRP as well uh, on the first two weeks to, to ensure that there's enough um, nutrition and enough cytokines in there for the, cart for the cell to be stable for us to continue to do that. So this is basically Stacy. Instead of doing it things as a uh, ACI or do it as a uh, have to set have to do a two step procedure. We instead of sending the things away, we actually do everything in one sitting, which is which is quite good. And that's uh, that's have been going on for quite a few years uh, nowadays. Is there any you know then then of course there is that is not always often okay for everybody to do. And all, it is an open procedure to stitch a membrane on. Technology have really moved on. Um, we can actually try to we can actually do that um, try to do that arthroscopically uh, with different compound with different sort of scaffold the um, limiting point really is the scaffold uh, so you have to open the joint so if it's a liquid type scaffold uh, that actually will help uh, for patella we tend to use it as an open surgery because it's very difficult we have to fight against gravity to do it 
And finally, uh, when, when things fail, we use allograft pluck or OAT procedure. Um, I'm going to quickly skip with the meniscus, but these, these bit here is extremely important for me to talk about in terms of meniscus is, is very important without, without the meniscus and uh, without, without balancing the meniscus and any cartilage regeneration will never going to work. Um, and finally, I will want to talk to you about um, treating a joint is very important. We don't want to just think about cartilage. The joint is all about is we need to treat the whole thing as one. The whole thing needs to be homeostasis in order for things regeneration to happen. So we need to think about the synovium, we need to think about the, the meniscus, we need to think about the cartilage, the alignment, uh, mechanics, extremely important. Without all those, all those things in order, no cartilage regeneration, no regeneration surgery or injection will work. Uh, so this is my final field sign, just to remind people about the, what we're talking about here is equilibrium. We want to push things over back at the other side. As, as surgeon, we are very lucky that we got much, much, much more technique, much, much more uh, different things that is on our armamentarium to get things uh, to, to help our patients to regenerate things. Um, and, and the last, and what, what I want to also say is that in, in terms of cardiac regeneration, we, when we're doing joint replacement, we measure things with x-rays, we follow patient up with x-ray. In cardiac regeneration, we must follow patient up with MRI scan. Otherwise, we don't know if our treatment being successful. And nowadays, with motion analysis become much readily available with artificial intelligent technology, we can actually go way beyond problems to see how active people are. Can we actually monitor those people, get the step count, actually link it with your with the with the Fitbit or or the iPhone uh, to actually see has our patient improved and how we can help our patient instead of just simply looking at problems, uh, and and it is extremely important. Uh, this is the end of my, my talk, and um, if you, I hope you enjoy it, and we will, uh, if you if you're interested, you know, please uh, ask, email me and uh, ask us for any more questions. Uh, thank you, Professor Lee, for this uh, amazing presentation. Uh, Paul, you can stop sharing, actually. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Paul, for this amazing presentation and uh, absolutely cutting edge work that you're doing in London. Thank you. Uh, Paul, uh, let's have a short Q&A. Paul, you mentioned about STASI, right? STASI looks a revolutionary single stage procedure, but do, do we have data that looks at the quality of chondrocytes when you compare it with the conventional ACI, uh, the concentration, the quality before implantation? So we're looking at two things. One is quality. The other one is concentration. Now, quality is extremely important. The best quality you can get from any chondrocyte is actually you just digest it. Your first massage is always your best one. Um, you, can, you can have more, but then when you go for the next massage, you're doubling it in a different environment, it will become different. So by the time you get to the ninth, they look very, very different. So yes, the best quality is the first one, but I think the question that you really want to ask is that um, is are they good enough? You know, have we got enough of uh, of cartilage cell? You know, you 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 take the bit on the outside, you chop it down, you digest it. So have you actually got enough cells to you know for 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 the cartilage to regenerate? Do we want to double it, triple it before we do that? And that's there are, are good evidence to suggest that actually it doesn't matter. Um, the, the, the more is not better. Um, that's really important. In regeneration medicine, a lot of people, even we just purely go back to simple PRP. People think that, oh, yeah, my concentration is much, much higher. I must be better than you. But actually, there has been many papers to suggest that the higher the concentration of something can actually become a problem. So imagine there is a you know the the nutrition that you can uh, and the uh, uh, that you can deliver into a group of cells, if they're too densely populated, they may not all get the appropriate nutrition. Therefore, they will not survive. They will die. So more is not necessarily better. I think it, it you're absolutely right. The right quality of the cells and we count them as well. We record every single one uh, you know, of the operation. We record how many cells we put in and then we put it in there. 
I mean, sometimes if it's, you know, we, we, we don't want it to be too low, you know, and we, we have a little formula to calculate them. So we, we have our absolute minimum quality, you know, minimum amount of cells count we're going to put it in. And, you know, once we reach that, that's it. We, we, we rather eating on that side. We, we rather have quality instead of quantity. Thank you, Paul, for that. Uh, Paul, interestingly, a uh, lot of surgeons are searching for a single stage uh, treatment uh, using chondrocyte implants. So it, I have you online. And so what is the ingredient? I mean, you said you're getting everyone to your OR and you're culturing it there. So what are the ingredients that are required? Because a lot of people around the world, they're looking forward for a single stage treatment. So what yep. do you carry? What, what is your formula? Formula is easy. You, you, the ingredient, you already have it. You know, it is, it is your own cartilage. You can only get cartilage from, you know, your, your own cartilage, is your best cartilage, right? So you basically need to, so there are different techniques you can do. And uh, for example, you know, the one that I showed was open, but that was, uh, that was the older photo. The newer one, we do it for aposcopically because te technology and move on. We can now actually biopsy those cartilage aposcopically. So Afrex, I don't work for Afrex, but Afrex have a graph net. So really we can actually capture, we can actually take cartilage uh, through the graph net. And when we got the actual cartilage, the key, the, the, the process is exactly the same. There are, there are company that they, they produce cartilage processor, but actually what you're doing is that you get the cartilage, you mince them, uh, you get, you get your knife and mince them, um, or you can have a, a grinder to grind them, but literally that you're breaking them out and then you put it, put a uh, collagenase to get rid of the collagen around it. And then, then you just basically spin it down and then you get the, the cells. And, and that's literally what we do in the lab. So you, you actually got the ingredient. Every single patient will have the ingredient because you're going in there, you're going into the joint, cartilage all around. So it's, it's always there. So uh, you have it, a spinner, a sp centrifuge there in the world, right? Yeah, you want, you want a centrifuge, you want, you want to have a centrifuge and you want to know the technique to be able to transfer. You know, it, it's not difficult. It's a syringe that you transfer one to the other or, you know, a pipette and a syringe is, you know, not that much difference. But yeah, you want a centrifuge. Um, that, that pretty much is the only thing. Uh, in terms of scaffold, the scaffold, the newest, there are newer injectable scaffold. You can just mix them. They are co-delivery system that you can have uh, one on the syringe that on one side that is injecting the cells, the other side injecting the scaffold, you mix it at the point of delivery. Um, that's also possible. Um, these are the more arthroscopic one, but the trouble about the arthroscopic one is that it's, um, you, it's a little bit more challenging and it's always depends on the quality of your scaffold. Some of the scaffold doesn't dry very quickly, so you have to wait for it to dry. Some of them dry too quick, so you have not put your cells in quick enough. And also, when you're doing these scaffold, you uh, arthroscopically, you need to do it under CO2. So we use CO2 scope instead of doing um, uh, water scope, that, well, well, saline scope, that, which is what we used to do. Uh, so the technique is slightly different, and this, you don't have as much space because carbon dioxide do push the joint out a little bit, but it doesn't give you as much blow. It doesn't blow up as much compared to 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 saline. So yeah, these are some of the limiting factor. Um, and also the, the surface area needs to be quite dry before some of these scaffolds will stick and the cell will stick. So, so it, it, it is possible to do it arthroscopically, which is some of the picture that we have shown, but they are for smaller defect, for the slightly bigger defect, I wouldn't hesitate to open to do it. Thank you, Paul, for that. And Paul, you mentioned about a second look arthroscopy, right? Some of the patients you have gone in again. And have you taken a biopsy and have you checked whether it's hyaline or fibrocartilage that has grown? Yes. Um, so so that, that that one I showed you, that was a, that was a, a meniscal injury afterwards. And then we go in and have a look. We took a biopsy. And yes, saffron stain, which is staying on type 2 collagen, which is where the hyaline cartilage is. And it has been very positive. And um, yeah, that, that's, so that was the older one and newer one nowadays, we don't really take biopsy anymore and, and things are a little bit easier as well. We, for the second note, we can just use needle arthroscopy, uh, such as the my eye uh, or the uh, nanoscope. And that just be done in the office and we're a little bit local and you can show the patient the picture and it look, it look you know, it, it look at a smooth surface and that's, yeah, that's what we did. Um, we do have some biopsy data and we have also um, one of the, for the Stacy, especially we working with the Belgium team that we actually got a paper out for that as well. Thank you, Paul, for that. And Paul, do you think microfracture is still 
a reasonably good alternative, especially someone who has who doesn't have this scaffold with him. I mean, you go in, you're not prepared for an ACI, and you go in and suddenly you see some cartilage defect, and you think microfracture still holds good. I mean, the techniques have evolved, like you said, lesser number of holes and smaller diameter, right? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's a very difficult one, you know, because I know there will be a lot of hardcore surgeons there just say, yeah, I microfractured this, I seen this patient in my hands, it worked great. There, I, you know, there are lots and lots of them, right? However, I urge you to think about the science and the principle behind it. So the, a fracture is a fracture. When you're breaking a bone, you're breaking a bone. Doesn't matter how micro, how nano, or how big it is. We all know as orthopedic surgeon, fracture heal with bone. We this is where we learn when we elementary orthopedics is you know fracture healing. You know how to fracture heal. We heal and uh, 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 secondary or you know uh, and we actually form um, palace right. So. I think when we're doing micro fracture, sometimes when we have a second look, we say, oh, look, I formed fibro cartilage. They are not fibro cartilage. They really are just callus. Give it a few years, they will ossify, become bone. This is why when sometimes you do a knee replacement, you go in there, you see this bone island in the middle poking out. Now, is it a technique that can still be used? Absolutely. And personally, I would say that it is a marrow stimulation technique through one or two hole. I am not expecting, so, and, I, and I think the, the principle and the philosophy that you're thinking need to be very different. Instead of thinking that stem cell come out, lay on there, we're not doing that. We're just stimulating that bone so that the body can go and try to heal that subchondral bone behind it. And that's the whole reason behind it, or marrow venting. That, that sort of thing to like reset the, um, the, 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 the blood vessel and the blood flow behind the subchondral bone. And that's actually what we're trying to do because we're treating the joint as an organ. We're not just treating cartilage. We need to make sure that we treat things behind it as well. And that's what is still very useful. Uh, I want to have a word of caution. You know, sometimes this is why when you have, if you actually do micro fracture, what you end up is not fibrocartilage. You end up with hemarthrosis. That's what you're ending up with. And that's it. Um, but yeah, just, just think of it, you know, think, think a little bit about it. And and yeah, if you have a massive defect, you know, just because you're there, you don't have to make that hole. You know, you 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 can come out and and you know plan and get a scaffold on top. You know, it, I think at the absolute very least, if you drill your hole in the bone, stick something over it so the, the blood doesn't leak out and doesn't make you have a hemorrhosis. That you know, and, and you haven't got the things to do it. You know, you, you have to think, you know, what, what are you doing? Are you doing someone any favor or not? Thank you, Paul. Paul, just one last question before I end the session. Now, you mentioned in one of the slides about lipogems. Lipogems has been a very controversial treatment in the UK and adipose tissue derived. And I've hosted someone who said that it's nothing but a marketing tool, I mean, to advertise and nothing more does it offer. So do you yeah. agree with the statement? Uh, this is why I bring it up because it's very controversial. And um, this is why, you know, this is definitely why I bring it up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think at the very beginning, when Lipogen first came out, huge marketing, and you know there are there are some non-surgeon going around and saying that, look, I put some fat in you, this fat will turn into cartilage, you know, and it will find where your defect is, it will turn itself into cartilage. It's very beautiful. That is absolutely not true. So that you know, it has been Lipogen been around for ten years now. Right. So we look at what happened to it because they are so much controversial. We controversy. We have to do a lot of experiment to it. There are different groups been looking at, you know, is it actually functional? Is it not functional? There is quite a lot of study to actually identify the mechanism of action with lipogen. For absolutely sure that these fats do not turn into cartilage. That's something that we need must tell everybody. I think it's absolutely negligent if any surgeon or anybody go and tell them, I put this fat in you, this fat will turn into cartilage. That, is, that can be proven to be negligent. But you know, it is a still a very useful tool. So the way that lipogen works, there's four functions with it. Number one is fat. So it does give you interposition arthroplasty. So you basically, and that's how orthopedics start, set out with, you put a bit of fat between the two joints, stopping and rubbing together, that's painful. So this is just in an injectable form easier to use. So that's function number one, interposition of plastic. Number two, within the, we talked about earlier on when we break the fat in a certain way, there are micro vessels, not the fat itself, it's actually the micro niche within the fat. 
they have the parasite and these parasites have been proven they have direct they, they can be direct to cells they are medicinal signaling cells they give signals for the body to try to regenerate and that is proven uh in quite a few studies and quite a few uh, uh actually the uh basic science study they looked at it and they have done um a lot of experiment onto it and actually see that it had made that difference it does not completely turn it does not turn into cartilage but it actually help regeneration number three is that it it have anti-inflammatory properties so within that niche in there there are cytokines there is anti-inflammatory cytokines so that that's just for, and and the last uh function is that these um parasite have been proven to bound directly into pain receptor so it actually reduced the pain so these are the four function of not just lipogen of any micro fragmented fat you don't have to so lipogen is expensive you know relatively expensive you know used to be they sell for a thousand pound a box you know it's it just rp for for buying the substance but actually all it is is you're breaking those fat down in a certain way that can be achieved with relatively simple equipment and and it have the same effect. It's the principle that's matter. Are you still doing any of uh, any of those? That would still, yeah, I mean, micro fat, fat, absolutely. Uh, not for everybody, for the correct patient, for the correct reason, and uh, with the correct explanation and discussion. Uh, we do, we do, we do do them, and um, we published a paper recently on regenerative medicine, and um, which is quite a high caliber journal, and it it, it showed our results. And it, we have we are working with um, University of Lincoln with uh, the bi um, biomedical science uh, with Professor Reihead, who who is our scientist, to actually really study into how it works, and hen hence we know that how it works. When we tell the patient, this is what we are doing. We are not regrowing the cartilage, but actually we will help regenerating the cartilage to delay the onset and using that uh, change the equilibrium to more normal. And that's what 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 it is for. Um, would it would it you know make you win again? Probably not. But would it delay your surgery for for five years? Maybe. Um, so that's I think it, a lot of these regeneration treatment or injection is about understanding and, and explaining to the patient in a correct manner. I think that's that's really important. Thank you, Paul. Well, I think that's all the questions that we have for this session. Thank you for this wonderful presentation. And I'm sure this is going to reach a lot of people all over the world. Thank you so much for joining in. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me. Bye-bye.